Welcome to Small Business Celebration. We're starting a brand new series on small business sustainability. And our guest this week, well, he owns a tractor business that helps his customers keep plowing through until the job gets done. This is Small Business Celebration. Welcome, where we're celebrating small businesses for big breakthroughs. Welcome to Small Business Celebration, and our guest this week is Brian Nagnetti, the president of San Joaquin Tractor Company. Welcome to Small Business Celebration. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. And for visioners who don't know who you are, who are you and well, what is it that you do? My name is Brian Agnetti. Uh, I'm the president of San Joaquin Tractor. And for visioners, if you're listening to this program, we are on the corner of Union and California here in Bakersfield. And this is a pretty major intersection. So if you're hearing traffic going by or employees walking by talking about stuff, this is a very much an open and active business. This is, a, this is like a farmer's dream. I mean, you've got yeah. all kinds of tractors and equipment and oh my gosh, you got all kinds of great stuff here. At what point did your dad say, okay, son, I can't do this anymore. It's all yours. He would never say that. <laughs> okay. Even the last, I mean, and, and, and we were at odds many times because he had this older philosophy. Right. That uh, if you were more than 50 miles away and we couldn't drive to it and put our hand on the tractor, right. uh, he did not want to sell it. Okay. And I, I tried to explain to dad numerous times that when with the advances of the internet we will get calls further than 50 miles <laughs> it's just gonna so, happen yeah so it was a battle for many years and now you yeah. sell tractor equipment as far as arizona no we we just sent one to saipan the other day where's saipan saipan is one of those pacific islands when you get to hawaii yeah you still have to go another five hours wow I and you sent a tractor yeah yeah, Holy we sent a tractor cow. there. There's another island called American Samoa. Right. We just sure. sent one there the other day. Right. We've sent numerous tractors to Guam, sent them to Africa, you name it. I mean, we, and the reason for that is because we're only 120 miles from the Long Beach port. Uh-huh. And so we use that to our advantage. For the visioneer who is familiar with what it is that you carry, Give us an example of who your typical customer is. Our typical customer is your guy that has one or two acres, okay. typically mountain communities. Let's just use Tehachapi, for example. Okay. That's a, that's a, everyone up there seems to have one acre. Right. They've never owned a tractor before. They've always wanted one. Right. They don't know anything about them. Right. And so when they come in, we have to ask them, what do you want to do with the tractor? Mm -hmm. And we try to figure out what size of a tractor that they may need to do right. that application. So mm -hmm. the kinds of things that a lot of your customers do, are they into brush clearing? Are they trying to dig a moat around their house, especially with all the rain and flooding we've been having lately? Yeah. What, what are the kinds of things that your customers typically use the tractor for? Well, if you like to garden, you'll want a small tractor with a rototiller on the back. Okay. They want a disc, because maybe you have six or eight or 10 acres and you want to build a fire break around your property oh. once a year. So you would pull a disc once a year. And that's very important, especially here in California in the more rural areas where you have to do weed abatement and brush abatement because of fire Oh season. yeah, that's a big business, really? the weed abatement. Yeah, we have, there's many of weed abatement customers that we have. Right. And they have contracts with the cities of Lancaster, Ridgecrest, and that's what they do. They, they mow weeds for the city. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right. What happens if they don't give you a call and they don't come and buy a tractor from you? What's, what's well, I, I guess two things uh, okay. uh, stand out the most. The first thing is you're gonna have to do it by hand. Uh, and, uh, yeah, my back doesn't do that. No, that, and <laughs> the second thing, if, if you wanna pay someone to do it, you have to hire it done. Oh. And you know, that's just never a lot of fun. And if you have to hire somebody to do it and it's done wrong. You're at their mercy. Yeah, you, you, if they say they're going to show up and they don't show up, nothing you can do about it. And then there's the county there sitting there with a fine book because you're rushed in. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> that's for sure. 
for those of us that, you know, we grew up in the Mojave Desert and we don't do a lot of ag and we're concerned about getting a tractor for the first time, you know, I, I can drive a manual transmission, mm -hmm. you know, and that's kind of the extent of being able to drive. I have no idea how to drive one of these yeah. things. H how hard is it to learn how to drive one of these so things? So the manual transmissions are still around, believe it or not, okay. but they're not a big deal anymore. I mean, nowadays, the newer technology is called a hydrostat transmission. A hydrostat. A hydrostat okay. means when you get on the tractor, you have different ranges. You have a high, medium, and low range. And then over on your right hand side, there's a pedal. One pedal will have a, fo a forward arrow and mm -hmm. one will have a reverse arrow. So I can have you drive in a tractor like this in less than 10 minutes like you've been on it for 20 years. And if I buy this tractor and I'm out there with my one or two acres, possibly three, knocking down weeds and having more fun mm -hmm. than a human is allowed to have, mm -hmm. and then it breaks. Now, my wife knows that I am the least mechanically competent mm -hmm. person in the world. In fact, and often I make things worse when I try to fix them. But this tractor I just bought or have had for a couple of years is now stuck out in the field. What do I do? So you would call us. Okay. Uh, we tend to concentrate in certain areas. That way we get a lot of tractors into that one area. And because of that, we can always have a mechanic in that area. Ah. Uh, so, like Tehachapi, for example, right. we usually have a mechanic in that area two to three days a week. And they can go ahead and they can pull it out or fix it so you can just drive it out. Hopefully the they can fix it right there. If right. not, we will send our trailer for it. You have your own trailer? Yes. We have a full-time driver. That's all he does is pick up tractors and bring them back. And for the visioners who aren't familiar, what, what lines of tractors do you carry? For farmers, the Massey Ferguson line is our, is our big seller. Okay. For your one acre homeowner, this Coyote line is a great seller for us. Okay. It's a smaller tractor. They're all four wheel drive. Right. The TYM line is also a big line for us for the small acreage homeowners. And when you're saying small acreage, you're talking like half an acre, one yeah. acre, kind of. Yeah. I've got a, I got a large lawn. Yeah, I yeah, no, okay. those, those tractors are great. They're diesel tractors, okay. four wheel drive, hydrostat transmissions, they're great tractors. And then you carry something from New Zealand? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's called a Tuatara. Tuatara, okay. Yeah, and they look like a little Hummer. It's a, it's a UTV, okay. a utility vehicle. Okay. Some people call them side-by-sides. Right. You can either get them in a gas engine or an electric motor. Electric, really? Mm -hmm. Is this does this currently and this is as of you know January of 2023? Is there are there rebates that you can get? There you? is yes. If you own a working ranch, mm -hmm. if you, uh, the the state of California will pay thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. Wow. For for the electric model, they won't pay for the gas model. Well, and if visioneers want to get in touch with you and learn more about these tractors you have to offer, okay. how do they do that? Well, we're, we're all over social media. Okay. We're on Facebook. We're on LinkedIn. Uh, heck, I think we're even on TikTok nowadays. <laughs> uh, and you have YouTube videos. And we have lots of YouTube videos. Sure, yes, sure. yes, we believe in those. And for those uh, of us that are stuck back in the, the, the dark ages, uh, if we want to pick up this thing called a telephone yeah so how do we reach you? we would love for you to give us a call you can reach us at 661-324-4517 you could also stop by our office here in bakersfield at 1201 union avenue and you also have two other locations in we have a location in wasco and one in delano and when we come back we're going to talk to brian about how does your business evolve and change and sustain over three generations by keeping your old customers satisfied with what you can offer your new customers. And if you enjoy Small Business Celebration, go ahead and like, subscribe, and notify, and we'll talk more about small business sustainability when we come right back. The winter season is rapidly approaching. But are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? 
Bakersfield's best tire store, Clareau Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clareau Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClareauTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clareau Tire at 661-324-6069 today. I'm here with Brian Nagnetti, the president of San Joaquin Tractor Company. And our vision or question comes from Anita who asks, we tweak what we sell to sustain our business. How did changing what you sold change your business? And how did that change affecting your existing customers? Heck, over the years, we've tried many things. Yeah. We were in the forklift business at one point. Really? And it was somewhat profitable, but I, I just feel like we didn't do as good as some of those big forklift companies. Mm, how so? so? Well, it's like anything else. If you only put one foot into it, you're never going to be as good as another guy that puts both feet in. Sure. They may have uh, an IKEA building with a hundred forklifts running in there, and uh, they can they can send a mechanic out and do ten oil changes in a day. Right. So it just it we ended up giving up on the forklifts. At what point did you get into the smaller tractor business? About. 12 years ago, right. I came to, I went to my dad and said, hey, dad, we, these, there is a lot more hobby farmers now than there used to be. Right. And we have to, that we've got to get more involved in these small hobby farmers. And, and his reaction was, absolutely, son, let's do it right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a challenge when you're working with people, not only him, I was right. working with five other people that, that had been here for close to, 40 years each. Right. And I was the young play, the young buck that didn't know anything they said. Right. So it was a challenge for me to get that through to these people that this was the direction we needed to go. What was the tipping point? You know, when we started selling a hundred of them a year. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. are you still selling about a hundred a year? No, a lot more nowadays. Okay, yeah. so let's just use those numbers. One of these, one of these coyotes that's behind you, just roughly, retails for how much? Uh, this one would retail for about twenty-four, twenty-five thousand dollars. The way it sits. So it's twenty-five thousand dollars times a hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Did you walk into your dad w with a P&L statement, profit yeah. loss statement, and show him, uh, Dad? <laughs> no, Dad never looked at those. <laughs> uh, uh, it, along with this tractor comes with, you've got about six different implements that you sell right. along with this. You've got a, a mower, a rototiller, a box blade, post hole digger, fork attachments, trenchers, backhoes. I mean, I can go on for days. Sure, right. What was the point in which your dad finally said, okay, son, you're right? Uh, I would say a good eight years ago is when he finally gave in to me and would allow me to start ordering in the, the, the numbers that I wanted to order in. And the rest, as they say, is yes, history. Is, is history, yes. It's a major part of your business now. It, it really is a big part of our business. We got a call earlier today from a guy in Mammoth. Really? So we're going to hopefully be sending a tractor up to Mammoth. Now, you mentioned earlier that you sell a lot of tractors up in, 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 in the Sierra, and including Tehachapi. And there's one particular customer that I, I really want you to single out real quick. And, and tell us about her and tell yeah. us about the experience. So that happened about four years ago. Okay. She's in Tehachapi. Right. Her husband was sick mm -hmm. with cancer. Right. I think it was stage four cancer at that time. I don't remember where it was, but he was, he was not going to make it. Right. And, sure. Uh, she wanted a small tractor. So we, she ended up buying a small tractor. And she would call me every month, wanting me to drive up there and help her take the box blade off, so she would, so she could put the 
the, the backhoe attachment on or whatever. Right. And then I did that for many years. And to this day, she still calls once in a while. And, Hello, I, and I run up there when she does. <laughs> now, one of the things that is well known that happened here at this very location here in Bakersfield, this was about 10 years ago? No, no, it was uh, 1998. For those of you who don't know about Bakersfield, this building here is a fixture. It's outlasted a lot of the hotels and motels at this very intersection. And in 1996, it caught fire. Yeah, I think it was 1998 or okay. give or take a year. Uh, but yeah, we had a big fire. I mean, it, it wiped out our entire store. Really? Uh, the outside shell was still intact, but everything on the inside was completely demolished. Wow. Along with all of our tractors we had inside here, they were antique tractors. We oh, had about no. 15 of them in here, and wow. everyone got burnt up. How did this affect you? Because your dad was running the show at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. dad was running the show at that time. Uh, it, 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 it devastated us. Mm. Uh, it's the first time I ever saw my dad cry. Really? I'll never forget it. Yes, he yeah. was laying in his recliner and just broke down. He, we, he went home that day and we didn't, we didn't know what to do. We, we ended up having really good insurance and they, they were great to us. And so it all worked out in the end. Did you ever find out what the cause of the fire was? Uh, yeah, they did an investigation. It was just 50-year-old wiring. And there's a lesson right there. Yeah. Yeah. You had insurance. Uh-huh. And they rebuilt. Uh -huh. what, what was the rebuilding process like? Well, my dad was friends with the Columbo's uh, construction people over there, so he was right. adamant about them doing it. And... Uh, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was kind of cool to be able to say, I want my office here and I want my office there. Right. And dad was adamant about uh, a meeting room, uh, the biggest room. Right. And he wanted a big table in there. And uh, so, it, you know, wine chiller and all that fancy stuff. <laughs> yeah. You can't have a sale of a tractor without wine. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> When we come back, we're going to talk about not being reactionary. How do you not just spontaneously fly off the handle when something doesn't go your way? When we come right back. The reason we're here with Brian today is because of the financial support that comes from visionaries just like you. It's because of your financial support on our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash small business celebration that allows us to go ahead and interview business owners like Brian to help you grow strong and profitable business. So reach out to us on patreon.com forward slash small business celebration where you can get additional content, additional information, and help your small business have big breakthroughs. I'm here with Brian Agnetti, the president of San Joaquin Tractor Company, and our visionary question comes from Ryan who asks, we're teaching our employees how to think ahead instead of being reactionary. What do you do that works across multiple locations? I can tell you what the typical answer is with just about every dealership. Okay. And that is, let's trade them out of it. If they're unhappy with the equipment, let's, let's trade them out of it and let's get them into something else. Right. I, I think when you trade someone out of something, you have to offer them less than what they paid right. in order for the company to, to profit from it. So I don't agree with that philosophy. What for, do you do instead? Well, for many years now, uh, it's only happened, well, one time in 2022. Okay. Uh, one time in 2022, a customer bought a piece of equipment. Right. And uh, he wasn't happy with it. Right. It didn't go fast enough. Okay. I don't blame him. It's not a, it's not something you would take to the dunes and go 70 miles an hour with it. Sure, right, it right. It only goes 25 miles an hour. <laughs> and what we did was we found a buyer for it and uh, we were able to get him every bit of his money back. That's so so this, is, this is brilliant. So you've got the customer that comes in that isn't happy with the tractor. Mm -hmm and you turned around and resold the tractor to somebody else for yes. him. And, we, and the company just didn't make any money on it. But we kept a, a, a customer and we kept a friend over it. 
That's brilliant because you've kept the customer and you don't have any dead stock. And one of our best customers, a beta weed on Rosedale Highway, is happy with their machine. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's customer service perfection right there. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, you've been doing this business for 30 years. Uh-huh. And you've had enough success that you're able to enjoy the fruits of the success, and you like to hunt. I do, what yes. Ki what kinds of hunting do you enjoy? Well, my dad was a big outdoorsman. Yeah. Uh, that's what we did just about every weekend. Right. Um, heck, I can remember dad would take me out of school on a Wednesday, or no, he would leave on a Wednesday to Utah. He would make my mother take me to the airport on a Friday. Right. And I would hunt, I would fly to Salt Lake City right. or wherever and hunt the weekend. And I was back on the airplane and back at school the following Monday. And you started doing this when you were how old? Uh, I was five years old when I got my, my hunter <laughs> safety permit. Yes. <laughs> Your first hunting license yeah. at five. Uh huh. And, and how often do you hunt now? Oh, I, I hunt in about four to five states each year. Right. Uh, Utah, uh, uh, Utah uh, Arizona, New Mexico. Uh, last year I was in Alaska. Right. Uh, going to Mexico here in March. What have you learned? from your hunting experiences that you apply to your business? I've learned that if you, have, if you don't have any luck with, with finding a deer, okay. and, uh, which would be equivalent to if you have a customer that shoots you down or gives you what they call sales resistance, okay. I've learned that you've got to brush it off and move on to the next one. I feel like that's been a valuable lesson to me. Next. Mm -hmm. Do you have any children? I have one son and two step stepchildren. Have you gotten them into the hunting game? My son, yes. Nice. Oh, nice. yeah. What kinds of trips do you like to take him on? Uh, well, we, we uh, I asked him yesterday if he wanted to go to Flagstaff with me this this uh, August on right. an archery deer hunt. Right. We've been to Idaho multiple times. Uh, we've done uh, last year. We did a New Mexico hunt together. Right. I wanted to include him in my Mexico hunt in March, but uh, he just graduated the Electrical Lineman College. Ah. And so he's fixing these power lines now. <laughs> With all the rainstorms we've been having oh, recently. Yeah, sure, yeah. sure, sure. You've had a wide variety of customers over the years, and you've got a lot of business owners that come through your door oh, as yeah. well. Oh, yeah. What's one of the reoccurring issues or challenges that you've noticed that a lot of business owners have that, that, that you've been working with? Oh, I think it's always the same thing. Uh, okay. Managing the employees or just okay. managing people in general. Why is this a problem? I, I, most of the time, I think this company runs itself. I right. mean, we have we finally gotten to the point at this company where a tractor shows up. Uh, uh, we have a guy that unloads it, takes it to the wash rack, gets it cleaned up. We have a routine, so right. the company runs itself. Right. It's managing the people that is the challenge, mm. and everyone has has different thoughts of how things need to be done. How how do you deal with that here at, at San Joaquin? Well, when you've when you have people that have been with you for over 30 years, like right. I do. Right. You begin to treat them like your brother or sister. So we have no problem telling someone, hey, you're wrong, and I don't want to hear it anymore. <laughs> right? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. And I'm told that a lot, too. <laughs> Tell the boss, I don't like it. I don't like it. He's wrong. What makes you wake up every morning and well, open your business? Have you ever seen a struggling business owner? Every day. It's just no fun. I don't want to be that guy. How do you not be that guy? Per perseverance. Um, fight through the, these issues that we have and figure out how to solve the problems and, and do better. In order to solve these problems, do you have friends, colleagues, a network of people that you lean on to, to help you with these issues? I do, yes. I have multiple business owners, friends of my dad's, uh, that I call on a regular basis. Mm. And I say, hey, I've got this problem and I need to know what you would think, I, what should I do about it? Right, right. All the time. Just yesterday it happened. How so? We talked about tax write-offs, a buddy of mine. Right. And uh, he, he was 
opening my eyes to different things that I could be writing off through the company that right. I wasn't aware of. Ah, right. This is not an endorsement or solicitation <laughs> or any other legal clause you want to put in here at this point. <laughs> Well, if Visioneers want to learn more about you and San Joaquin Tractor Company, how do they do that? Come in, come in and see us. We're at the corner of California and Union, 1201 Union Avenue. Uh, phone number is 661-324-4517. Uh, we are on Facebook. You can message us. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, and I believe we're even on TikTok nowadays. And I'll be right back with my final thought. The winter season is rapidly approaching, but are the tires on your car or truck ready for wet weather? Bakersfield's best tire store, Clarou Tire, has been serving families like yours for 80 years and installs and services the tires your family depends on when the wet weather comes. Give Clarou Tire a call at 661-324-6069 and ask them about what tire works best for you and your budget. Call Clarou Tire at 661-324-6069 or visit them at 530 East 21st Street in Bakersfield or at ClarouTire.com today. The wet winter weather is rapidly approaching. Call Clarou Tire at 661-324-6069 today. A resolution worth fighting for. A couple of weeks ago, I was having coffee with a visioner friend of mine, and we were talking about New Year's resolutions, and more importantly, why they don't work. And we were talking about how they often are the type of, I'm going to lose 10 pounds this year, or I'm going to read a book a month, or I'm going to grow my business by 6,000%. But the problem with those kinds of resolutions is that your heart really isn't into them. You may think you want them, but your heart isn't really there. And as we were talking, he's preached this to his clients over and over again about how resolutions are just simply a waste of time. So you can imagine how surprised I was when he said, Michael, I have a New Year's resolution. And I asked, well, what is it and what happened? And he said, well, back in November, I was sitting at my desk planning out the coming year when my young son came up to me and asked, Daddy, are you gonna watch me in the Christmas pageant this year? And I looked at him and I said, well, of course, I'd be happy to. And my young son looked at me and said, but Daddy, won't you have to work? My friend went to watch his son in the Christmas pageant and he decided that he was going to make a resolution for the coming year. He was going to make sure that his family really did come before his business. A resolution worth fighting for. I hope you enjoyed our conversation this week with Brian Nagnetti, the president of San Joaquin Tractor Company. And I hope you join us here again next week as we showcase another business that's having big breakthroughs. By the way, what happens when an old tractor's tire falls off? An old, when an old tractor's tire falls off, it sits on the side of the road and everyone blames the dealer because they say the tractor is broke. And then the farmer will tell all of his friends, hey, this tractor's been broken. This dealer hasn't been out to fix it. So that's exactly what happens. And all this time, I thought they just retired it. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Welcome to Small Business Celebration. And our guest this week is...